Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. This week, I want to show you a feature of Final Cut Pro 10 that once you see what it's capable of, you'll wonder how you were ever able to live without it. It's called the Timeline Index, and it truly will give you editorial superpowers. Here's a typical timeline that includes some secondary storylines, some titles, some transitions, and some multicam clips. Now let's say that I wanted to change something to one or more of these elements. Without the timeline index, I'd be forced to selecting the item or items with my mouse. But the problem is, using this method, you'll often have no idea what you're selecting. Press Command Shift 2 to open the timeline index, then select the clips pane. In this window is a running list of every element in your project. Let's say, for example, that I wanted to replace only the cross dissolves with another transition. In the search field, I'll enter cross, and a list of applied cross dissolves that are currently in use appear in the list. If I select these items, they become selected in the timeline. Also notice that the other transitions that are not cross dissolves are not selected. Let's say that I wanted to change all of these dissolves to fade to color transitions, or any other transition for that matter. Because they're selected, I simply open the Transitions browser, locate the transition I want to replace them with, and double-click. Just like that, all my cross dissolves are now fade to color transitions. Now let's look at another amazing superpower, the ability to locate specific clips by keywords. Select the Tags category, then the Key button. Now you see a list of every keyword that's associated with all the clips that make up your timeline. Let's say that your client called and she's interested in reviewing only the shots of her vineyard so she can use them for still images on her website. I simply enter vineyard into the search field and only clips that have been tagged with that keyword appear in the list. Just like with my previous example with transitions, selecting the items in the list selects them all in the timeline. But here you can really take this to the next level. I'll reveal the roles pane, then click the edit roles button. I'll add a video role and name it Client Selects and click Apply. I'll go back to the Tags category, select all my vineyard clips, then from the Modify menu choose Assign Video Roles Client Selects. Now all my best vineyard clips are color coded, making them easier to identify. But it gets even better. Because these clips are assigned a specific video role, I can export a movie with just the clips assigned to that role. From the Share menu, I'll choose Master File, then click the Roles button. From the Roles As menu, I'll choose Video Only as separate files, then remove every video role except Client Selects, then Export. For you folks using a track-based editor, do you realize how many steps it would take to do what I just did in only a few clicks? Okay, back to the Timeline Index. For one, you can search for your clips based on clip type. If you're in the Clips pane, by entering Multicam into the search field, all your Multicam clips will appear, regardless of how they're named. Selecting each one selects the corresponding Multicam clip as it appears in time. I'll select the second one from the top, and because this is a Multicam clip, if I want to change the angle, I just press the number 2 on the keyboard to cut to angle 2, or 3 to cut to angle 3, etc. You can also search for secondary storylines. I'll enter Story, and both my secondary storylines appear for selection. Let's say that I wanted the second storyline to appear where the first one is currently located in the timeline. I'll select it and press Command X to cut it. Then select the first storyline in the list to move my playhead there and press Command V to paste. I can then select the first storyline, cut it, and paste it somewhere else. So what I'm doing is making selections based entirely on metadata. I have one more Timeline Index superpower to show you, because time won't permit me to show you them all, and this one has to do with titles. At the bottom of the Clips pane, click the Titles button. This will bring up a list of every title in your project. Here's how I use this feature, and it really saved my reputation with a client one time. We've all had the experience, at least most of us have, of sending out a version of our project with a misspelled name in the title. Because all your titles appear in one list, you simply click each one to get a quick preview in the viewer. In this case, I notice that the name of the client's vineyard has one S, and it should have two. And the misspelling appears in all three clips. Thankfully, this is an easy fix. 
I'll go to the Edit menu and choose Find and Replace Title Text. I'll copy the errant text and paste it into the Find field. Then, in the Replace field, I'll enter the correct name and click Replace All. I'll then select each title to verify that the change has been made across all of them. If you found this tutorial helpful, I have something you should be very interested in. We have a full tutorial called Warp Speed Editing in Final Cut Pro 10 that's filled with awesome tips, techniques, and workflows that will make you faster in Final Cut Pro 10. Right now, it's 30% off on our website. You can see the link below, including the code. We'll see you next week on MacBreak Studio.